Well, I just finished building another experimental banjo. And for this one, I had to use the principles of 11-dimensional string theory to create some really specialized circuitry that I built into the pot. And I'll show some of that later. Of course, you can only see five strings here. The scales of the other six string dimensions are so infinitesimally small that they can't be perceived. Okay, let's go check it out. Okay, when you pluck the strings, an infinite multi-dimensional wormhole is generated back through your guts. Now, if you're wondering, I can't feel any weird or painful effects from the wormhole when I'm playing it. But my wife Sally says she gets a really bad headache whenever I play it, wherever she is in the house. Here are some images of the banjo. The pot is 11 inches in diameter with a one-piece flange and a resonator. The scale length is 25 and 3 quarters inches. The fingerboard is ebony trimmed with curly maple binding. The inlaid stripey things are made from mother of pearl flakes and the markers are blue-green opals. Now for you string theorists out there, these are the fine adjustment controls for the string tensions and string winding numbers. And these are the new Cyclone tuners from Rickard Banjos. The neck is constructed from a curly maple center strip with side bands of curly walnut. And those two materials are separated by insulating layers of high contrast black and white material that provide a high level of aesthetic capacitance. And the resonator is laminated with walnut burl and the binding is made from curly maple, which turns out to be a great room temperature superconductor for sound waves. And I incorporated two mottos that have always influenced my string theory research. Fiat Plux and Cogito Ergo Strum. So here's what the guts of the pot look like showing how I generate the wormhole. Basically if you hadn't figured it out already I just incorporated what's called an infinity mirror into the banjo pot. To do this, I wired up a really simple circuit to drive a segment of a strip of white LEDs that are attached around the inside of the pot. And all of the wiring is on the outside of the pot beneath the resonator flange so you can't see it from above. Uh, the lights in the circuit are powered by a 12 volt DC power pack through a cable connected to a jack and a battery. Um, I had to drill a hole in the flange to mount the power pack, but not much other metal work. The sensor that activates the circuit is a piezo disc transducer about the size of a quarter, like the one you can see stuck to the piece of scrap soundboard wood at the upper right. And when you flick the sensor, the light strip flashes. And you can get these sensors online by the dozen really cheap at less than a buck each. During the final setup, I just used double-sided sticky tape on the back of one of those sensors to stick one of the discs onto the top of the banjo head right under the tailpiece where you can't see it. And the vibration of the banjo head is plenty powerful enough to activate the circuit. The other major thing you have to do is to set up partially reflective mirrors on the top and bottom of the pot. And that part's pretty tricky and it took a bunch of tries to get a method that worked well. I use two different types of aluminized mylar sheeting for the mirrors stuck onto the rim with double-sided sticky tape and then trimmed off using an X-Acto knife. This only shows one of the two mirrors being stuck on. Sorry, but I didn't make a good video of the rest of that process or any of the rest of this whole process. Uh, and so I left out a lot of the trickiest parts that almost drove me nuts. 
but you can tell it's all pretty straightforward and I'm sure that all of you guys and gals could figure out how to do it all yourselves. So go for it. Good luck. Let me know if it works. <laughs>